and welcome to another edition of Bonnie's Insider, presented by Universal Primary Care. In this episode, we'll take a look at the exciting starts to the basketball seasons for both our men's and women's teams, feature some of our standout fall athletes, meet with a Bonnie's alum who has helped shape ESPN, and more. It's been an exciting time for Bonnie's basketball fans with some great moments in the early season. When the Bonnies are rolling at the RC, there's one fan who will always be cheering for his favorite player, Dominic Welch. Here's the story of a special bond between a Bonnie star and his biggest fan, 11-year-old Donovan. We have a big couch in our living room that whenever he's watching TV, he always sits on the couch. But whenever there's a Bonaventure game on, Donovan would move to the recliner that was right next to the TV and he would just be enamored. And the one day I finally kind of figured out that he was into it, he looked at me and he goes, I really like Dom Welch. You want to shoot? Come on. Go ahead, buddy. Donovan is 11 years old and was born with Down syndrome, multiple holes in his heart, has, still has a lot of GI issues that we go to Rochester and Boston, Massachusetts for. So, I mean, he's had a tough go of it in his 11 years. He definitely has come a long way since he was born, but he has a feeding tube that we use for all of his nutrition. He is sort of an autoimmune mess, but he's done really well. He's had a pretty healthy year so far, and. We're hoping that continues so that he can be here in person for as many games as possible. Sports have always been a thing he enjoys, but he can not always necessarily participate in. We've known since the day he was born he was always going to be behind, but as parents and like his fellow educators, we just trying to find things that can push him, you know, that make him come out of his shell and want to learn. And for him, you know, sports is one of those big keys for him. <laughs> <laughs> It, puts a, it just puts a big smile on my face every time. Just seeing him, you know, just seeing how excited he is for the game, seeing how excited he is to watch us play, come see me. It was special to me to send a birthday thing to him because you know how we can impact people, you know, and just to, we have to impact him and just keep making him happy. It's just, it's a, it just means everything to me. Last year we subscribed to ESPN Plus just so he could watch every game. Once we saw that the connection was being made, that he was in the, you know, both the men's and women's team, every game, religiously, we sat there and watched till the very end. We had both discussed buying season tickets in the past, but we knew that this year kind of was the year, especially with Dom and a lot of the guys being seniors. Through a lot of help, we made it kind of a big thing for his birthday, and he got to get his tickets for the birthday. And it's funny, when he gets excited, he kind of goes inward a little bit, and he gets a little goofy. So when we told him he was getting his tickets, he goes, okay, yeah, that sounds good. But then later in the day, he'll just, he'll always ask you questions like, so we're gonna go to all the games? I'm like, yeah, D, we're gonna go to all the games. And Dominic will be there? Yes, Dominic will be there. You know, he'll be playing. So yeah, he's very excited to be in the Rally Center this year. Just making him feel a part of the family, you know, as if he's playing with us, you know? And just keeping that relationship going, you know? Just, you don't want him to feel like no outsider, you know? Just bring him in with us, just like he he's a player on the team, you know? And that's how comfortable I want to be with him every time I see him, just to know that you know, I'm, I'm going to be here for you regardless of anything, if I'm playing basketball or not, you know? So just want just to keep him attached to me, keep him on my side, like my little brother. See you tomorrow. Right. See you tomorrow, man. <laughs> All right. We're hoping that Donovan has a lot to cheer about this season at the Riley Center. With several months of winter still ahead, softball weather is still a long way off. When the softball season does finally roll around, however, graduate student Grace Parachinsky will bring international experience to the field for the Bonnies. Born in Russia and adopted by her family in Pennsylvania, Grace had the opportunity to return to her birth country this past summer and play for the Russian national team in the Softball European Cup Championships. In addition to helping her team win the bronze medal, she returned home with memories to last a lifetime. So back in 2019, my stepdad and I were watching some online streaming games of the European Championship. And we were just like thinking to ourselves, hey, like, I wonder like if Russia's playing, maybe you can play for Russia. There was an agency here called World Links and the woman was from Russia. She did a host program, so she brought kids over from Russia. They stayed with you for a month and then they went back to Russia and you could adopt and do the paperwork. At that point we thought, oh, well, we'll adopt a baby. But I saw this picture of Grace and her older brother Cole. And as soon as I saw the picture, I knew they were my kids. I flew to Russia in August. And when I got their medical records, they found out they had an older brother. And I filled out their paperwork to adopt all three and brought them home in October of that same year. I've always thought about it. I knew one day I would end up going back home. 
I wanted to go with my parents, but unfortunately with COVID and everything, that was impossible. I knew if I was going back over, it was definitely a good idea to go back for softball too. It was a very long process. We had to go through a lot of paperwork. There's a lot of doubt on the way. We reached out to the embassy about getting my passport to go to Russia, and they said they lost the documents. We rushed the documents. Uh, I had to take a few trips to the Russian embassy in New York City to get my passport, to get approved. I didn't know if I was making the national team or not. I was hoping to. So when I got there, I had to compete in our second round of the Russian championship. I was nervous. I had to you know, kind of show myself off. And immediately I hit like four home runs in a row. I kind of settled in easily there. The team was incredible. Everyone was welcoming and open arms. As soon as I got there, they surprised me. They treated me like royalty and I couldn't ask for better players, friends and role models. I looked up to a lot of the players. I was the youngest on the team. Most of them were like 28, 30, 32. Some of them had kids as well, and it really like reflects the love of the game and you know, keep on going even when you have a family you're taking care of. Uh, we ended up winning bronze at the European Cup, which was pretty awesome. The day before beating Czech Republic for the bronze medal, we played Italy, who was undefeated the whole time, and we ended up <laughs> Doing pretty well against them, so we were excited. We kind of shocked everyone, and it was a pretty great experience. It was fantastic to watch her play. I mean, she was representing St. Bonaventure, representing her family, representing everything we stand for over here, and uh, I know she represented well. Uh, when I thought that Grace was going to have an opportunity to go back home, where she was originally born in Russia, I thought it was going to be a fantastic uh, opportunity for her. And coming back and just sharing that experience with us, just bringing that back to the team, I think is going to help us a ton. I plan on going back next year for the European Championship. They're playing in Spain. And I have plans with the president of the committee to work on some coaching experience there and keep on going from then. I can't even tell you how proud of her I am. <laughs> just to see her do that, because she, since she was really little, she picked up a pencil and my brother would throw little papers at her and she would hit them. But he's the one who said, you better sign her up for softball. So she's just been so driven always. If she didn't want to do her homework, I'd say, you're not going to softball practice. And it was done instantly. <laughs> so just to see her like realizing her dreams and being able to do that, and it's it's just incredible. She loves her Bonnie's and she doesn't want her softball career to stop at Bonnie's. She wants to continue it, you know? <laughs> Go, Go Bonnie's! We're not returning Grace back to you, no. She just oh. takes care. <laughs> Grace isn't the only Bonnie to compete against international competition as of late. Congratulations to diving freshman Zayed Morsi, who was selected to represent his home nation of Egypt in the World Junior Diving Championships in Ukraine. Morsi already set the Bonnie's program record in the one meter dive earlier this semester. It's time for a quick break, but when we return, we'll meet perhaps the top golf graduating class in program history and much more. You're watching Bonnie's Insider, presented by Universal Primary Care. Schultz is always at your service, ensuring your vehicle gets the maintenance it requires. Now, with modern, touchless options across the entire auto care experience. Speak with a service advisor on the phone or at one of our newly envisioned service centers. Pay invoices online or via mobile app. And drive home in confidence knowing Schultz only permits limited personnel access to your vehicle. Exceeding expectations is our mission. That's why the next generation of auto care is already here at Schultz. Western New York is known for energy innovation. Today, Energy Mark is leading the way for the next generation of renewable energy. At Energy Mark, we help power Western New York homes and businesses with low-cost, locally produced energy, including renewables like solar and wind power. Energy Mark, the official energy supplier to the Buffalo Bills. Connect your account to Energy Mark at buylocalenergy.com. We haven't even gotten to the start of conference play yet, but it's already been a memorable season on the court for Bonnie's basketball. The Bonham men's team earned its first national top 25 ranking in 50 years and had a memorable championship run in the Charleston Classic in November. On the women's side, the Bonnies also jumped out to their best start in several seasons. Let's take a look at some of the top moments so far. Poetic 
Honey, all the wins. Yeah. Pay no L's, I gotta get a no call and quit. Yeah. Gotta keep on moving no matter how hard it gets. Yeah. Better move out the way, cause I'm coming with harder hits. My head is as hard as a brick, but I'm harder than all it is. You better move, you might get knocked out. Success ain't no giving, some days I don't hit, I don't sleep When I'm focused, I'm dangerous, they don't wonder when I'm anxious Ain't no limit till I tank, I'm running on fumes The hopper system don't amaze, the roads racing through the pavement Get your hands out of my bag, I know that's because I've been in it I don't need the brag, I guess that's what happens When you taking care of your business, but some friendly, you do the math I'm out of my pocket, Houston, we got a problem, I ain't perfect Let them watch me, elevating, got them nuts Cause I'm the pilot in the cockpit, no stopping, ain't the house And whoo, watch out, get a hit, watch out, get a hit, watch out, get a hit Whoo, watch out, set it up, bet you watch, shut it down, watch did really wanna come? I guess the one got a finger right up in on a grenade. I ain't never been there when you think you can pick up my line, but the one about the cage. I need all the wins. Yeah. Ain't no L's, I gotta get a no call and quit. Yeah. Gotta keep on moving no matter how hard it gets. Yeah. Better move out the way, cause I'm coming with harder hits. My head is as hard as a brick, but I'm harder than all it is. You better move, you might get knocked out. to some more great moments on the court before the season is done. But when the calendar flips to 2022, the Bonnie's golf team has high hopes for a run at an Atlantic 10 championship. At the head of the charge for coach Ryan Swanson's team is a trio of fifth year seniors whose bond off the course has helped make them perhaps the top graduating class in program history. Yeah, it was a pretty easy decision. I was wanting to get my MBA here anyways and then after being given the extra year eligibility, it sort of helped make that decision for me. And then even more so when Dan and Chab decided to come back and us three can play another year together, it definitely was something that we're all looking forward to. We felt like last year we had a great team and had chances to win tournaments and we've had some good success so far in the couple of tournaments we've played and we're looking forward to taking that in, in the rest of the year. Kind of a tough decision for me. At first I was kind of on the border. I wasn't really sure if I was going to do it. You know, Chap and Jack both decided that they were going to do it. That kind of leaned me towards doing it just because I knew how much more solid the team was going to be and I knew that two guys that I grew up with were going to be coming back for another year. So that made my decision a lot easier. And I knew that we would have a another run in an A-10 title and just make more memories with my brothers. It's definitely not easy, especially through all the whole pandemic and everything. You're not sure if you're going to still be in person or on Zoom doing classes and whatnot, but when Swanee kind of informed me what our schedule was going to look like and some of the verbal commitments he already got for us to be in some fields, I mean, that was that was a massive attraction for me. Jack always knew he was coming back, so for us, I think that definitely played into consideration as to whether or not we would too. Christian and Dan are two of my best friends here at school. We're together all the time, live together. It's awesome being able to play one more year with them and be at college another year with them. And then the other guys on the team, we're all really close together. All hang out a lot on the weekends and practice together a lot, push one another. We've Got some new guys in the lineup to start this year so far, which is great. Our team is pretty deep, so it keeps the competition up on the team and keeps pushing everyone to be better. So I think experience plays a big role, especially in college golf. You sort of understand the importance of saving a couple shots here or there in a round. At the end of a 54-hole tournament, when you add up all the shots, the difference in five or 10 shots, if you can save, can be the difference in four or five spots on a leaderboard. So if each guy can just save a couple more around, that can be huge in the end. I think that's something that, you know, we've all learned as we've gotten older and played five years of college golf is definitely that you just gotta stick through it, the bad holes, the good holes, because little things like that can make a big difference. We definitely have some unfinished business. I think this is by far the most solid team that we've ever had since I've been here, maybe in Bonaventure history. I think we have our best opportunity this year to win an A-10 championship. We definitely have unfinished business and we wanna get it done this year. I think we have 
the potential to do it. It's just a matter of getting off to the start because you can afford mediocre day down there, but if you don't start well on day one, these teams are too good to try and chase down. This is easily the deepest team I've ever been on. I mean, we got eight or nine guys competing to fight for lineup spots. I think there's a very legitimate chance we could almost bring our entire team down there because at any given moment, some guy could step up. It's really exciting that we get to have the opportunity to push each other because then that makes us better when we see the VCUs, the Davidsons, Dayton's, and all those top teams that have been kind of a little bit above us the last few years. So now I think this is, uh, this is our time to shine. We've had some high hopes the past couple years and I think this one is kind of, we realize that we don't have another year after this, at least for myself, Christian, and Dan. So we know this is our last chance and we know that we have the ability to do it. It's just a matter of doing it. So we're definitely gonna be pushing one another hard each day and over the winter going into the spring to make sure that our games are as sharp as we can going into A-10s because we have one last shot at it. So we're gonna give it our best. Good luck to the Bonnie's golf team this spring. It was a successful fall season for the team with wins in the Little Three Championship, the Murray Cup, and more. The spring season kicks off on March 7th. Well, if you're watching this show right now, chances are you watch a good bit of ESPN, too. St. Bonaventure Class of 1979 graduate Chris LaPlaca has been at ESPN since the beginning, helping the network rise to the status of being a household name from very modest beginnings. The Senior Vice President for ESPN Corporate Communications, he's not only an extremely well-regarded figure in the world of public relations, but he's also understandably a huge Bonnies fan after attending SBU during some extremely successful seasons, including the NIT Championship run. In this edition of the Energy Mark Alumni Spotlight, we caught up with Chris to talk about some of his greatest Bonnies memories, building ESPN into a global empire, and much more. When I'm 13 years old, um, I began to become a college basketball fan, and St. Bonnie's was always on my television. That was Cal Ball and Air, that team. They were on TV almost every Saturday, and I loved the spirit. I just loved it. Now I'm a junior in high school and thinking, I want to major in journalism. I don't want to get on a plane to go to college, but you know, I went to my guidance counselor and he said, oh, St. Bonnie's. I said, bingo, I know that place. And I applied, I got in, and I accepted before I even set foot on campus. When I came as a freshman, I wanted to be a sports writer, that's what I wanted to do. So I showed up to the first meeting at the bottom venture. I got the rifle team. I had, the only gun I've ever shot was a BB gun. Like, so I'm, I'm gonna cover the rifle team. And okay, so I, they couldn't have uh, been more grateful for me and hey, teach me the sport. And I worked really hard and I had senior leadership. And by the end of my freshman year, I was writing the basketball recruiting story. And the next year I covered the team, we won the NIT. Junior and senior year, I worked in sports information. Freshman and sophomore year, I worked at the, at the BB and it was actually great training. And it really helped lead me to the place I got to at ESPN. And it's, you know, it's all, it all started here. And lifelong friend, Jimmy Barron lived across the floor from me, S.E. Hollis. We're in the, in the hallway of our dorm. Some reason we had boxing gloves and hey, Essie, let's shadow box. Why would a 5'10 kid shadow box a 6'6 guy whose reach was like taller than me? And he clubbed me one, he didn't mean to. He knocked me down, I saw stars, my nose was, he goes, oh, I'm so sorry, you know, but we had a blast. These guys are my friends today, right? It was, it was, it was just great. The spirit of that team is a spirit that persists today, I think. We were always the underdogs. We were always out of scrap a little more, and they were just gritty. Team-oriented, great players, underappreciated perhaps, and Coach Atlin and Coach Calba and, and Coach Sasson just molded those guys. And they thought they were going to win every game they played. We won the NIT maybe by a total of 12 points. Every game could have been just a little different, but it wasn't. Why? Because they were determined and they were also great players and they had great coaching. But it was their attitude, and I still think you see that today. What defines a bottom metro basketball team to me is what defines the school, which is maybe we're not the biggest. Uh, maybe we don't have this, we don't have that, but here's what we do have. And we focus on what we do have. And when you focus on glass half full, and you have belief, and you couple that with, with hard work and determination and some skill, you can go pretty far. And that's what I love about this place. And the, the team today and the team back then, same deal. I got lucky, frankly. Um, but it started at Bonaventure. Senior year, playing Villanova. Glenn Hagen makes a last second shot, we win. It's alumni weekend. Gonna be a major cocktail party now on the floor of the Riley Center. My work is done. I look over the SID from Villanova. I'm gonna help this guy, because in May I'm gonna graduate. So I helped him. I delayed my beer drinking by 20 minutes. 
was the best 20 minutes I ever spent because I graduated May, I have no job. This guy hooks me up with a with a, an opportunity at Brown and I get it. Why? Because the basketball coach at Brown called Billy Calabaugh and said, we're thinking about hiring this LaPlanca kid, should we do it? And Calabaugh said, get that guy if you can. He, I would never have asked him to be a reference. So I get the gig. Nine months later, my boss at Brown goes to ESPN, she takes me with her. I've been there ever since. I speak at colleges a lot and I always say to them, you're looking at a dinosaur. You won't do 40 plus years at the same company. But I always say this, I've worked at the same company in the same address for 40 plus years, but I've never worked for the same company from one year to the next because we keep evolving and keep growing and I've been able to do that. You gotta stay ahead, you gotta work hard, you gotta evolve yourself, try to look around corners. And so I'm here 40 plus years, not because I'm just hanging on, it's because, you know, I'm, I've learned to bring it every day. We were a bunch of sports fans just trying to serve other sports fans. We liked it, we thought other people might as well. I was pretty naive, I didn't understand how the business worked. I tell kids now, take business classes, understand how the company actually is gonna make money. Early days, you got your paycheck, no direct deposit then. Everybody fled to the bank, deposited it before it bounced. I mean, there was moments in time where we thought we were gonna be bought by Ted Turner. I went to, said to my wife, hey, what do you think about Atlanta? The reason we got to where we are is the same thing as the bottom entry, and this is where I credit St. Bonnie's. Work hard every day, try to look around corners, don't cheat yourself, don't cheat your colleagues, and if you get a bunch of people with passion and work ethic, it's amazing what you can do. And the thing that sustains us even today is you can't get in the lead and just coast. Once you get there, you gotta keep running or the other guys are gonna catch you. We're not looking over our shoulders. You, you can't lead by looking to your side or in back. You gotta look ahead. If you just get in front, keep running, they won't catch you. And that's how we have it, a bunch of people and that's how we show up. So you get the right work ethic and right philosophy, right North Star, doesn't matter the change. You've got the foundation you need to keep going and, and that's where we are. I understand the power of sports, the power of media to kind of guide and influence. I'm a child of that. Bonometry became my place. It's been such an important part of my life, the friends I've made, the uh, experiences that I've had, it all started on this campus. And I, I, I could not be more grateful. When you get a bottom entry grad, you're gonna get someone who can hang. And the, the reality is, once all those people got to ESPN and proved themselves, now that opens doors for, the, for others to come. It's been really helpful. If someone says, oh, Bonnie's, you guys are everywhere. That makes me smile. We're certainly fortunate to call Chris a member of the Bonnie's family. That's all the time we have for this week, but before we go, we'll leave you with the latest edition of What's Brewing, presented by Tim Hortons. This week, Bonnie's women's lacrosse senior Madison Callen chats with cross-country track sophomore Brian Gleason about overcoming adversity to become a top runner of the Bonnie's team. Until next time, we wish you and your family a happy and healthy holiday season. Go Bonnie's! Hi, my name is Madison Callen, and welcome back to another segment of What's Brewing, sponsored by Tim Hortons. Today I'm here with cross country and track runner, Brian Gleason. Why choose St. Bonaventure? Yeah, so my dad spent a lot of time here when he was covering uh, the basketball team for the news. He took me on a visit here my junior year of high school, and I met up with Coach Mack and Coach Lonzi, and we just, instantly clicked. They had all the same ideas that I had about what I was looking for in, in a team, and it just seemed like the perfect fit. I know that you run cross country and track. I know they're very different. What is it like training for both of them, and which season do you prefer? Yeah, so I prefer track. Um, I just think that it suits my strengths better um, I'm as a mid-distance runner. Training is a little, a little different. It's more interval work on the track, not so much long runs like you would get in cross country, and that's just what I prefer. So I know last season you had a red shirt due to a respiratory illness, mm -hmm. but now you're one of your team's top runners. How were you able to come back and be so successful? Yeah, so the main thing, I had a great support system. Um, my coaches were always there for me through the better half of a year, been through injuries and physical therapy, and without the great physical therapist that I saw back home, the training staff here, and my coaches and teammates, um, it made it a lot easier to be able to come back from that and get back into running. Was there ever like a point in time last season where you thought you'd never be able to compete at the Division One level again? Definitely, I had my doubts. By the time my fourth or so injury rolled around in the winter of 2021, we decided as a group that it'd be best for me to redshirt and that's really when I decided to put my nose to the grindstone and commit to the comeback and be able to come back strong. It feels incredibly rewarding. It just proves that when you put hard work into something or set your mind to it, then you can come back from anything, whether it's whether it's a respiratory illness or a minor injury or anything like that. So 
Well, thank you so much, Brian. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Tim Hortons. Good luck with the rest of your season. Thank you. And as always, go Bonnies.